My name is Dr. Mary PV, and today we will be discussing isoimmunization. This presentation will address isoimmunization. We will discuss the definition of isoimmunization, how it occurs in pregnancy, and how to diagnose it. We will also review how isoimmunization may adversely affect a pregnancy, the appropriate screening and treatment, in addition to the methods of prevention, including ROGAM. First, let's begin with basic background of blood groups and antigens to better understand isoimmunization. Red blood cells contain a variety of antigens which belong to the RACIS or RH blood group system. There are 50 defined blood group antigens, among which the antigens D, C, lowercase c, E, and lowercase e are the most important. The commonly used term RH factor refers to the RH positive and RH negative, referred to the D antigen only. An individual either has or does not have the Rh factor or D antigen on the surface of the red blood cells. Remember, this term strictly refers only to the most immunogenic D antigen of the Rh blood group system. The status is usually indicated by Rh positive, where Rh positive does have the D antigen, or Rh negative, where Rh negative does not have the D antigen. Isoimmunization is a process that occurs when the maternal immune system is exposed to a foreign antigen, therefore creating antibodies to the specific antigen. This is clinically pertinent to a pregnancy in which the mother is exposed to a new antigen that the fetus expresses, specifically when the mother is Rh negative and the fetus is Rh positive. Maternal exposure to fetal blood containing the Rh antigen can cause the mother to produce antibodies against the Rh antigen of the fetal red blood cells. This process is called isoimmunization. This does not affect the current pregnancy, but it will affect a future pregnancy. Subsequent antigenic exposure during a succeeding pregnancy is called an isoimmunized pregnancy, and it can result in a significant increase in the maternal antibody titer. The maternal antibodies cross the placenta and target the fetal red blood cells. This, quote, sensitized fetal red blood cells are destroyed by hemolysis, causing fetal anemia. So how do fetal blood cells enter the maternal circulation? There are multiple mechanisms in which this happens, which include but are not limited to delivery, either vaginal or by cesarean section, miscarriage or pregnancy termination, amniocentesis, placental eruption, and trauma. Remember, isoimmunization only occurs when the mother is Rh negative and her fetus is Rh positive. When the mother has developed antibodies to the Rh antigen, it can adversely affect a future pregnancy of an Rh positive fetus. Specifically, when the condition is caused by the Rh D antigen, it is called Rh D hemolytic disease of the newborn. When the maternal IgG anti D antibodies pass the placenta, they enter the fetal circulation and cause hemolysis. Symptoms and signs of an affected fetus can be seen by ultrasound. This includes an enlarged liver, spleen, or heart, and fluid buildup in the fetus's abdomen that can be seen by an ultrasound. Symptoms and signs of an affected newborn can include anemia that creates the newborn's skin to be pale in appearance, jaundice or yellow discoloration of the newborn's skin, sclerite, or mucous membranes. This may be evident right after birth or 24 to 48 hours after birth. This is caused by high levels of bilirubin, which is one of the end products of red blood cell destruction caused by hemolysis. The newborn may have severe edema of the entire body in addition to dyspnea or difficulty breathing. All pregnant women undergo screening for isoimmunization at the time of routine prenatal laboratory testing. A positive antibody screen means that the fetus is at risk for hemolytic disease. If the antibody screen is positive, the laboratory performs antibody identification and titer on the maternal specimen. Of note, not all types of maternal antibodies to red blood cell antigens cause hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. However, anti-D is a common and potentially severe complication. A reference table can be used to ascertain fetal risk if an irregular antibody is identified. These antibody titers can then be followed during the pregnancy. It is also important to determine the paternal blood type, because if the paternal blood type is Rh negative, then the fetus will be Rh negative and not at risk for hemolytic anemia. Antibody titer levels determine the risk of the fetus. Titers higher than a ratio of 1 to 4 are considered Rh alloimmunized mother. 
Invasive fetal testing often begins at titers of greater than 1 to 16 or higher and are associated with fetal high drops. Titers are drawn monthly until 24 weeks of gestation and then every two weeks during pregnancy and along with other testing can help guide the timing of delivery. Another important clinical step in the evaluation of the isoimmunized patient is the determination of the severity of the effects on the fetus. A large part of this is monitoring the severity of fetal anemia. There are three methods that are currently used to ascertain if the at-risk fetus is actually anemic. The first method we will discuss is fetal blood sampling, the gold standard to which all are compared. This procedure is the most invasive and thus carries the highest risk. A needle is placed through the maternal abdomen into a fetal vessel via direct ultrasound guidance, and one or two millimeters of fetal blood is obtained. Preparations for intrauterine transfusion are also in place at the time of fetal blood sampling to proceed with intrauterine transfusion if necessary. The second method utilizes spectrophotometry to quantify the bilirubin level in the amniotic fluid acquired via amniocentesis. The bilirubin level in the amniotic fluid correlates with the degree of hemolysis. The result is plotted on a normative curve based on gestational age. The semi-logarithmic graph, called the Lilli curve, is separated into three zones according to the risk of anemia. The third method utilizes ultrasound to assess for fetal anemia. This is the most commonly used method and the least invasive. Overt evidence of fetal high drops on ultrasound is an end-stage sign of severe fetal anemia. Obviously, the goal of fetal surveillance is to identify the anemic fetus prior to the onset of high drops. The ultrasound acquired Doppler measurement of a vessel in the fetal brain called the middle cerebral artery, or MCA, has been shown to accurately identify moderate to severe fetal anemia even in non-hydropic fetuses. Because this technique is non-invasive and has been shown to be more accurate than the Lily curve, the MCA Doppler has largely replaced serial amniocentesis in current clinical practice. An important tool that has been developed to prevent isoimmunization is ROGAM. ROGAM is an anti-D immunoglobulin and a derivative of human plasma. It interferes with and prevents maternal immune system from forming antibodies against Rh-positive erythrocytes. It is administered as an intramuscular injection. It should be given to all Rh-negative women in the following circumstances. Routinely at 28 weeks of gestation, within 72 hours of the birth of an Rh-positive fetus, or when there is a risk of fetal maternal hemorrhage during the pregnancy. It is important to note that physicians should check the fetal blood type after delivery to see if giving the rogam is indicated. If the fetus is Rh negative, then rogam is not indicated. I've also included several excellent references for guidance for isomerization and management during pregnancy.